Hey, it's Dr. Dunaway with Cairo Strength, and today I'm talking about the squat series. And is your squat hurting your back and hips? Is a topic that we discussed in the blog. If you haven't read it, the uh, the link is in the description below, so you can kind of see how this all fits in, in the context of that thought process. So the first thought we talked about was the butt wink, and you've all probably seen it. But what the butt wink is is that I go down to the bottom of the squat. You'll see a lot of people's hip kind of duck under like that. And so when the pelvis ducks under, it's putting the lumbar spine into flexion, which is a huge injury prone position, especially under axial load or in the context of a squat. So the first thing we talk about doing is reprogramming how it feels to get in deep hip flexion by keeping the spine neutral and the hips moving only. And then we talked about increasing the active hip range of motion because you can only get as deep in a squat as you can actively raise your hip because you should be pulling yourself down into the bottom of the squat. And then we talk about kind of taking that programming into a standing squatted position with a light load. And like Greg Cook says, when you load a movement pattern, you really hit save on a good movement document. So that's kind of how we're gonna start reprogramming this to try to get that butt wink out. So the first thing we talked about, trying to reprogram, we're gonna do it in a deloaded position, quadruped position, toes into the ground, my ankles are in line with my knees like they would be in the squat. And I'm gonna start with my chest up, chin back, good neutral spine like I'm doing the squat. And I'm just gonna rock back into hip flexion. And what I'm really trying to avoid is this pelvis dipping underneath. Now you might need someone to watch you to see when that pelvis starts dipping. And so you can start to really be able to be aware of that so you don't go back into a squat and not be able to feel that butt wink because a lot of people aren't aware when it's actually happening. So by doing that rocking sequence back and forth for 60 to 90 seconds, it'll really start to teach you how far you can get into hip flexion before that butt wink happens. And then you gotta go think about the active hip flexion. So the active hip flexion, what I'm gonna do to engage the core, I'm gonna use a broomstick or a dowel rod and I'm gonna try and drive it through the ground. And as I try to drive this through the ground, I'm really increasing the core tension here. So then when I lift my leg, this core brace will really prevent this back from coming under. Because if I think I have good hip flexion, but I'm actually getting that hip flexion from rounding my back, that motion's gonna be coming from here, not here, and the low back can only handle that for so much. So what I'm gonna do, if you look at me from front, lock in as I bring my hip up, as if I'm coming out into the squat position, I'm gonna get that hip as high as possible. My foot's not gonna dangle, it's gonna be nice and activated. And I'm gonna to try to really lock in, hold this position for five to 10 seconds, lock in here, come back up in this position. And again, I'm driving this down rod through the ground, trying to lift my hip as high as possible, preventing that butt wink in a standing position. And I'm gonna accumulate a one minute hold on each side. So five to 10 second reps, accumulating one minute on each side, being able to brace nice and tight, but maintain a good breathing pattern. So now that we've got the active hip flexion and that hip flexion deloaded, um, and we haven't been moving our back, we're gonna load um, the pattern, the squat pattern with a goblet squat by doing some slow eccentric uh, squats. So holding a kettlebell or dumbbell out in front of you, and this is 25 pounds, I wanna go very heavy. You're gonna lock in, nice good neutral position, pull yourself down with your active hip flexion and figure out where you feel that hip run out of motion and don't go into this butt wink. So lock in, hold this position nice and tight, active hips, active core, good breathing pattern for five to 10 seconds and then slowly come out of that without, uh, without kind of having this forward fold like we talk about later. So I'm gonna do probably five to seven reps of that. Slowly pulling myself down, slow, 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 slow. Find that end range, nice locked in, keep neutral spine, five seconds, and then come back up. And that would be a good way to practice the squat pattern outside the context of an actual squat. Practice that, practicing that enough outside of your squat days will really start to allow you to transition that movement pattern that you're working on into the exercise squat and then you'll be able to really start developing a lot of good strength and keeping that back safe. So if you have any questions about this, comment below. You can always reach me at drdunaway at chirostrength.com. And like I always say, don't just mend, transcend. Thanks.